Hi, George. It's our last meeting, so I wanted to get as much time with you guys as possible. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm out. Shoot. You're not out. You're still there. <laughs> What's happening here? We can see you fine. We can see you and we can hear you. Oh, well, I cannot see you. <laughs> Okay, let me see how I can fix this now again. Maybe I'll try to, yeah, there I am. Okay, good. So anything exciting happening and happening in your lives? I have no children at home. That's just kind of fun. Oh, well, there. <laughs> that's a nice break. I'm doing nothing but working, but that's all right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no kids are. Hannah's got her last two weeks of summer camp, and Lucas is joining her as a camper. So well, there not, you go. she's not his counselor, but still. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. Morning, all. Hey, how are you? Morning. Good. Wonderful. Good, good, good. You know what's happening on this side from my side? I have a I have a big screen with Amy on there. I don't I never have that. I don't know what's happening there. Up on the top right, you can have different views. So I usually have it in gallery. Right. Okay. I see uh, John and Chris and Shakina uh, on the top. But uh, yeah, well, that's that's what I see. Okay, but I never see if people talk like a big screen like now. Well, you only see the person who's talking. Large. Oh, okay. Because normally I never have that. I always have all kinds of little, little pictures. It, in the oh. upper right hand corner, there's uh, uh, it's like a square with three little squares on top of it, I think is the look. Uh, and if you click on that, you can select a gallery view and it'll show everyone that's on the meeting. Okay, right. I don't, I, I don't, maybe, maybe my technician Joe set it up this way because I don't see it. Yeah. I only see. Uh, you, you need to. You need to move the cursor up to the right hand corner. Okay. You know the, if you I'll move just, that up. Yeah. Do you see something that view. says okay. view? Yeah, I so did that. Click on view. Yeah. And then you, you should see speaker or gallery. Okay, got it. If you click gallery, then you'll have all the little photos. Yeah. All right, got it, got it. All right. Excellent. See, I need to take a computer course like so bad, but everybody in the BOAA is still closed, so I can't go there. <laughs> Funny thing is, uh, Steve was telling you exactly the same thing, but unless you move the cursor up there, you don't see that little symbol. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's terrible, just embarrassing how stupid I am with computers, really. No, <laughs> you're not. You it just has way. to work. It just has to work. <laughs> Good morning. Hello. Good. Hello. Morning. morning, Rachel. Renee, your computer's working. Thank God. <laughs> Keith, Keith got you all fixed up? No, no. Like, well, he tried, but it still didn't work. So, so what, then I went to my original tech guy here in town. He had that thing for four days and he finally fixed it. Well, well it's good to see you back. I'm so glad it's working, let me tell you.
Oh. Did you get my message, Rachel? And seriously, 6.20 in the morning? <laughs> I know, I sent Bonnie one, I think it before six, but it wasn't a text, it was an email. So I don't know, that's why I get shit done. <laughs> yeah you're right though I was I thought we had I thought we had those jugs I but I don't know <clears throat> no I'm pretty sure that the Steve you might be, you'd be able to correct me but uh, we were talking about our donations for the rib fest and the pig things I think those are the BOAAs are they not correct yeah and I don't really want to ask them for them because I don't want to give them any money but like we don't have we have we don't have a contract or anything we can we can do whatever we want and things are very different this year plus we need every dollar we can get so i'll stand there with the, with the pig <laughs> so the, the thing is i'm not sure if they'll let us use the pigs without giving them a cut of the money well i'm sure we can easily make one it was just a big water jug wasn't it i think so Something yeah, at like the at, at the um, the rib fest I've been to for a couple of others, they've just used a big water jug. Yeah, they, they put some kind of logo on or you know a sticker or something like that, and they just and like when the, you, a when water you, cooler jug, right, Joe? Like yeah. that goes in a water cooler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, the um, it, when when the greeters, like I was greeting at. Um, at, at a couple of them and um you just say you know you get your ribs over there and you'll find somebody um uh just um if, if you'd like to make a donation you just say something nice you know we're, and we're uh, if you'd like to help rotary out you know you'll find somebody there with a jug so. uh amy yeah. there's a there's a better than average chance that there are two of those uh jugs in the ibw uh lock up okay Good morning, Kelly and Georgina. Yeah, good morning, ladies. Good morning. Uh, Hi, Renee. Good morning. Hello. Hi. Good call, ladies. Now we don't have we won't have the feedback when you're on one screen. Perfect. We've got somebody that's joined. It just says iPhone. I'm not sure who that is. It's Peter. <laughs> oh, Peter. Oh, hi, Peter. Yeah, I'm trying to get hooked up here. I'll be with you in a minute. Yeah. Good morning, Kaylee. Good morning. Great job yesterday. Thank you. <laughs> and the dance moves on Joe Solway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I knew somebody was going to mention that. Well, you know, you start seeing, you start seeing, it's my party, and like I just start to move, you know, like the Frug and the Watusi and the. Oh my goodness, Joe! I should have uh, should have put your your whole dance routine on, Joe. I was I was disappointed. I thought it was all going to be there. I I ran through the whole gamut, you know. Yeah. Well, I was wasn't fast enough. I was getting photos instead. That's okay. I have lots of pictures of you in your different. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I actually in between sets, um, I went and I got, you know, she's um, Callista's a huge Leslie Gore fan. I went home and I have, um, I collected records for many years and I had two pieces of vinyl from Leslie Gore and she was thrilled. I, I just gave them to her. Wow, nice. Thank you. So you that. remember me telling you how much I starting to collect vinyl, right, Joe? Mm, mm -hmm. You come and pick through my collection. And Doug, I forgot to text you yesterday back. I'm sorry. I'm on vacation right. this week, so I'm pretty available if you want to drop off that stuff for me. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Well, the whole summer squad's here. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Oh, I'll give it a couple more minutes. So, Steve, when are you supposed to be back now? Do you know? Um, 
worst case scenario Friday. It all it all depends on how well today goes. Good luck. Thank you. Your dad's gonna volunteer for RIDS. That's what he was saying. Yep. Yep. I, I may have mentioned it to your mother when I saw her this week. Yes, I, I heard that. Good for you. <laughs> And Chris, uh, and I guess Phil's not on. I did send out a message to all the Durham clubs. Thank you. Asking yeah, I, I sent it to as well to a few of, you know, selected. So they're probably going crazy with, it, I guess oh. it doesn't hurt. Thanks, yeah, I had to, I had a back and forth conversation with Jay Cannings last night, so. Great. He'll be, he'll be there too on the weekend. That's super. Well, you know, we're all in this together, so the more we can do as a group, I think the better we are. And Chris, it turns out, it turns Sorry, out no. uh, Chris, I'll be able to uh, to do another shift on the weekend. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Just uh, yeah, pop by when yeah. you can, but I know things are going in your world right now so. yeah my sister is gonna she's gonna be leaving soon for texas so she's gonna be covering a little more right now okay all right chris i'll see if i can get the lawn signs today i was didn't hear back yesterday but i can always see if i can pick them up today i'll give them a call yeah just some timing so that we can get them out uh no they don't you know a few days before the event i'm sure we'll be fine they did warn it would take a couple of days, so. Hmm. All right. Well, everybody, it's just about 7.33-ish. So I think we'll get started and we'll let people in as they come along. So good morning, everybody, and welcome. To, oh, hold on a sec. Welcome to the, I believe it's August the 17th. I'm pretty sure. Uh, meeting of the Bowmanville Rotary Club. So good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our guests. Uh, we have Kelly and Georgette here who are our speakers this morning who will be uh, were formally introduced a little later and we have all four members of our summer squad here to give us a recap of, uh, of their summer. Um, somebody else just joined it's only a phone number so I'm not quite sure who it is but if you're a guest welcome if you're a Rotarian welcome. So uh, we'll start off this morning with the invocation Steve. Okay here we go. Um, forgive the uh, casino noise in the background. Uh, as we gather here today as members of Rotary, I ask that we remain ever mindful of opportunities to render our service to fellow citizens and to our community, keeping in mind the enduring values of life, exerting our efforts in those areas and on those things upon which future generations can build with confidence. Let us continue to strive to make a better world. Excellent. Thank you, Steve. Um, uh, Rachel, I believe you're uh, acting on behalf of your mother this morning. I am. I'm going to try to do it with a Scottish accent. <laughs> just, just kidding. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. Um, it, so on uh, Saturday, it's Jason's, uh, Stippy's birthday. So everybody reach out to Jason and say happy birthday. Uh, he's our only birthday this week, but we have four anniversaries. So Gord and Kim will be celebrating uh, 20 years. Jim and Kathy Abernathy are celebrating 19. Leah and Matt are celebrating 17. And Sully and Tracy are celebrating 17 years of marriage. So congratulations to everybody. And Fred DeVries is 14 years service above self on Friday or the 21st, so Saturday. Congratulations, everybody. Very good. Congratulations. Uh, hopefully we see Jason on Saturday at Rip Fest. Uh, all right, so moving right along. Oh, the land acknowledgement, my apologies. Um, we'd like to acknowledge that here in Bowmanville, we are on a territory covered by the Williams Treaty and that this land is the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation. We offer our gratitude to our Indigenous peoples for their care of the land and their teachings about our earth. 
which is a nice segue into Renee. Uh, Renee, you're going to be introducing our guests this morning. It is with great pleasure that I introduce my good friends, Kelly Sulas and Georgette Navillon uh, from the Matawa Education Center in Thunder Bay. They have been working there for quite a long time. I should have asked how many years, but I forgot. Anyway, um, they will tell us all about the program that was set up by uh, four Rotarians who have passed away, Dr. Ted Mann and Doc Park. They initially started that um, literacy program and the bursaries at uh, the education center for the northern communities. Um, so it's been my great pleasure again that I introduce those two wonderful ladies who work so hard at the education center. Please welcome them with an applause. Kelly and uh, Georgette, you're on. And your sound is off. You have to. Good morning. There you go. Good, Good morning. Thanks, Renee. It's nice to, see, nice to see everybody. Mm -hmm. It's been probably almost three years, years since yeah. we were there. Yeah. How long? Three years? I think it's been since we were in your uh, since we were in Bowmanville. Yeah. Wow. So we, I think we see some new faces, definitely the summer squad. So mm -hmm. nice to meet everyone. Nice to see everyone again after all this time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, we put together just a presentation, so bear with me while I try to share my screen. I tried to clean up my <clears throat> desktop for this too, so. Yeah, we have it on PowerPoint. Yep. Perfect. Is this working? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. we got it. Right. I'm going to go into presenter mode. So, mm -hmm. okay. I hope this works. We do have a couple of videos on here with some sound. So, hopefully, um, it works. It works. <laughs> okay. Look at the agenda first. You want to do that? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay, this is the agenda that we had put together and then we put it on PowerPoint. Uh, we were going to send it to you ahead of time, however, because the uh, PowerPoint was too huge and wouldn't email. So if you do require a copy of it later, we could send it to Renee or Fred. Okay, so what our agenda, we uh, figured, okay, we did the opening remarks, um, introduce, uh, Renee introduced us. Uh, we're going to talk about a brief history. Uh, we're going to be showing a video of our uh, education center at school, uh, talk a little bit about our bursary overview and some changes that we've made to our uh, uh, application and criteria, some additions. And we're going to be showing uh, a, a little video of where are they now. These are some of our students that have um, either received bursaries or have uh, been successful in their education journey. And then uh, if we have time, we have some questions uh, and answers. Okay, so we're going to move on now. Okay. Um, many of you met Sharon uh, on a number of occasions, most recently when we were down about three years ago. So I'm just gonna sort of read her her bio here is partially covered. Um, Sharon Aid is a member of Yamatum First Nation, and she's also the director of the education department. Sharon's academic background includes her honors degree in Bachelor of Education, Principal Certifications, Native Teacher Education Diploma, as well as a diploma in Early Childhood Education. So she has always really been involved in the success of youth. Um, and promoting that, that success within her communities. So Sharon has, exper has experience in management, admin, and teaching, which brings extensive knowledge in policy and proposal development. Um, the school that we're sitting in right now is really just like 
uh, an idea that came to her while she was the education director in her community many years ago. And it came to fruition because of her drive and, and her um, push to really get things moving here for the education center. Um, so Sharon has worked as a teacher, a spec ed tutor and a primary at the primary, primary, le primary level, sorry, and she was the education director for her home community for 10 years. Uh, more recently, she was employed with Metala as the past program administrator um, and since has become the education manager and most recently um, and well-deservingly, she was just appointed as the new education executive director of this, of this department. So leaps and bounds since she's began. Um, her strong points and experience are working at a planning level and strategy development and modifying First Nation education programming. Um, and she's also got a passion for her language and, a st and um, she's been working actually really hard to like um, promote language. Most recently in the last few years, we've had some, mm -hmm. we've had some um, folks from New Zealand join our team and they are basically um, revive, helping us to revitalize the language um, in the community. So that's Ojibwe, Ojikri and Cree. They've mm -hmm. done this in New Zealand. And um, so they, they've taken on the responsibility of coming here for years, left their family behind, their friends behind. They've been here for three, going on four years now. Mm -hmm. And they're teaching wow. us methodology. Mm -hmm. And we've yeah. since hired several language teachers that they are training and they've offered language courses and they're going to be implementing all these into the community so that uh, the communities can revitalize their languages back and uh, it's going really well so far. Yeah. Perfect. And also Sharon can't be here today. It's just Georgette and I. So she does send her regrets and she wishes everyone well and hopes that everybody has been doing well during this Pandemic. difficult time and she says hello okay. the team the, the two-man team oh that's okay geez i do a lot of talking in here sorry <laughs> Um, just a little bit of a history of the partnership. We always sort of try to um, just, yeah, for new members, speak to that and just sort of refresh memories and stuff. So, um, so the criteria, the history, sorry, the um, bursary fund is for our Matawa First Nation community members that are attending elementary school. And it also goes through post-secondary uh, students who are in the trades field and uh, mature students. So we are talking a cycle of K to anything all the way up to adult ed. Um, so every year participants will um, complete the application process. And then the goal of the awards is to pro promote excellence in literacy, language, leadership, personal activities, and um, applicants who demonstrate determination and commitment with education and career goals. So, Renee spoke to this slightly. Um, the Bowmanville Rotary Club and Matau Education Department have been partners for over 12 years. So this is a long-standing partnership that was built in 2007. A little bit before my time, but it's been such a blessing to be able to be on board. Um, and it has since like supported literacy and language and the overall success of our students, like I said, from kindergarten all the way through to post-secondary and adult education. Here our students' achievements are celebrated at an award ceremony in Thunder Bay. So many of you, well, a few of you have had the opportunity to attend and it's always such an honor to have you be there and um, it really puts a face to, you know, the, the support and the partnership that that we've received and built with Bowmanville. And it's re we really appreciate that. Our students have the best time every year and it's, it's just um, 
it really brings like communities together. So the last couple of years, as we all know, have proven to be very challenging due to left us all. But like the deter from last year, this is not going to deter us from continuing to support our students and recognizing their achievements. Um, the show must go on, folks. So this year, our students will be honored via a virtual ceremony. And we're trying to make it really fun for them because this is going to be a new experience. Mm -hmm. Sound. Uh, just to celebrate their Ladies, just a second. Uh, Somebody needs to mute. I'm not sure who it is, but you're overriding the, the our speakers. Somebody who might be in their car. Oh, there we go. I think you're good now. Okay. Uh, our new, we have a new deadline application this, or deadline um, for this year, just due to the fact that our schools are, are looking at getting back at a normal school date, uh, but there's still that level of uncertainty with, with everything that's going on with the pandemic. So our tentative date is Friday, October 1st. And then we're also going to honor any of the submissions that were handed in last year. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna do like a two year combination of awards because the work was done and it, they were submitted and uh, we really feel like they need to be like recognized for that. So I think we have okay. Um, we do have a video coming up next. I hope it works. This is a video that we shared with most of you when we were there last time, but we really wanted to like show it again. Um, it really speaks to our students and the community and their um, learning and things that happen. Although in this video that you'll see, this was our old building. We have since moved to a new building um, and we are very happy here. <laughs> things are in the works. So hopefully this will work you can let me know. Matawa comes from a word that means a place of many rivers coming together. In 2010, nine communities who make up a tribal council called Matawa came together to make the Matawa Learning Center. It's a high school just for you. It's in Thunder Bay on the territory of the Fort William First Nation. We're thankful to them for allowing us to practice our culture and teachings on their territory. You might be leaving your community to attend high school in Thunder Bay soon, or have already arrived. We hope that you'll come to Matawa Learning Center where we can help you achieve your dreams. What's it like to go to high school here? At Matawa, you'll have teachers, staff, parents, and a whole community supporting you. It won't feel like regular school. When you get here, our transition coordinator and our friends at St. Joseph's Care Group will make a plan with you one-on-one -on -one to map out your year with guidance from elders, knowledge keepers, counselors, youth workers, health workers, and teachers, and whoever you might need on your team. You can count on learning by actively doing things. First off, our grandfather drum serves as the heartbeat of the Matawa Learning Center. Through our cultural program, you'll get to practice our tradition and culture by feasting, playing grandfather drum, hiking, and smudging. We'll all take care of each other's spirits in sharing circle, ceremonies and faith-based services, medicine wheel teachings, and doing art got a full mental health program. We go bowling and do activities that you choose to do like baseball, paintball, and game nights. Our favorite is staff versus students hockey tournaments. The staff have not won yet. Hmm. Or you can make your own food if you want and learn about our traditional cooking, gardening, harvesting, and food gathering. 
we'll learn how to make duck just like grandmother makes it. We serve a tasty lunch from our nutrition program every single day too. One of the best things we do is go out on the land or canoe and learn knowledge and skills like moose hide tanning, ice fishing, and medicinal plant wisdom. Each summer, our students canoe from one Metawa nation to another and get high school electives for it. So in addition to courses required to graduate like English and math, you can get credits from our other programming. You're allowed to earn six credits a semester, which means that you can actually graduate faster. We are so proud to offer the annual Jordan Wabas Memorial Award, which celebrates Metawa students who excel in athletics and outdoor education. We're open from 9 a.m. until 8 p.m., but our support goes way beyond school hours. We have someone on call 24 seven. We're here to help you with transportation or respond to emergencies. At school, there will be support people to help you with things like appointments, IDs are connected with one of our friendly counselors. We've got a co-op teacher helping you get work experience and there are after-school tutoring and activity programs. We've got a great community backing us up. So our teachers go to school too at a place called Critical Thinking Consortium, which is pretty smart sounding. Our team is huge. It includes youth inquest workers, an education system navigator, and two staff leading student achievement and trades development. Our school wouldn't be what it is without our community in Thunder Bay. You can see the sleeping giant from almost anywhere in the city. The giant's there to remind you of the good life you can lead here in Thunder Bay. Going to movies, playing sports, shopping with friends, and experiencing all types of cultures and people. When you graduate high school from Matawa, you'll be ready for whatever is next for you. Skilled trades, an exciting new job, college or university. We're here for you. Miigwech. Perfect. Okay, so just I just really wanted to make a quick mention that since we've moved, our staff has gone from about 25 to almost 100. Um, so it's really, it's growing exponentially. Mm -hmm. And we are, when we put out the applications, um, it's not only for the students that you saw in our video. This video is really an orientation video and a transition video for students who have who are coming to Thunder Bay to our high school. Um, but we also have students from the communities that are attending high schools all through Thunder Bay mm -hmm. and, and public schools. And um, so they are also all like part of the application. Like they're also included in and all welcome the to participate mm -hmm. in all the services and the application for the bursary as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. A little more on the bursary overview. Uh, Renee and uh, Kelly had spoke a little bit about our partnership forming. Uh, the development started in 2007 with um, uh, the late Ted Mann and Doug, um, who, who did a lot of work with our uh, Metal Education Department. And we really appreciated them starting this and introducing us to all of you, all of you other wonderful people that we've met since. So we're very honored to still be part of this program. Uh, and uh, on behalf of our manager, now executive director, Sharon and uh, Kelly and myself, we, we really want you to know how much we appreciate all the efforts you are doing and continuing the partnership and uh, making this work with us. So we really appreciate that. So as they mentioned earlier, like the, uh, um, the bursary program was initially started to promote literacy, numeracy, and uh, just reach out to students so that they could, uh, feel successful and feel that uh, their achievements are being recognized. So we, we had got together with some of our principals and education directors uh, when the partnership was forming just to get some ideas on 
what the schools felt would be a, a good idea on how we could disperse this bursary. So that's where it came up with we'll, where we wanted to recognize all levels of education, uh, as mentioned before, right from elementary to post-secondary to adult education training. So we tried to cover every area of uh, either it be our youth or our adults improving on their education goals and uh, becoming successful and being able to give back to their community somehow and work with their communities and our education department. Um, so anyway, so we formed a bursary criteria uh, based on all of that. And uh, so far it's been quite successful. And uh, each year we do try to look at uh, um, different ways of uh, improving on our criteria, improving on our uh, application package, which uh, some of you uh, may be familiar with. Uh, this is just a photocopy, but we do have some nice application packages that we send out to our communities. And we also have it posted on our Metawa website. And we have a newsletter too uh, that we do for Metawa community. So we try to really ensure that we're uh, getting our, our information out there and uh, creating the awareness of this program. And as well, we always continually talk about the, our partnership and when it was formed and uh, how, how much of the support that you have been providing and how we really appreciate it. So yeah, so that's um, part of uh, what our overview is uh, just, you know, talking about uh, some of our new uh, additions yearly and uh, Kelly will go into uh, more detail on uh, one of our really new additions that we put this in place this year. Um, and as mentioned before, we usually try to host a banquet uh, annually and we try to have it like with our when we recognize our post-secondary graduates so that uh, the bursary winners that are of all ages will also see that uh, they can achieve uh, their goals and they'll see uh, people from their communities have graduated out of certain areas and that uh, they're all doing well and it promotes uh, support and education to our youth as well as uh, having the banquet and recognizing them. And unfortunately, as mentioned, due to the pandemic, we haven't had uh, the past two Junes, we haven't had the opportunity to have a sit down banquet. And also we miss seeing the people uh, from your uh, club that would come and join us and uh, you know help us distribute the bursary. So hopefully in the near future, that will resume again. Um, so as mentioned, we, uh, we did uh, change our deadline date to October 1st because uh, all our schools were uh, pretty much closed down to online learning uh, the past uh, winter and uh, spring. So hopefully, as Kelly mentioned, some of the schools are, will be resuming back to in-class and uh, being able to uh, continue uh, with uh, putting together their uh, applications and their presentations to us. Um, yeah, so as mentioned over the years, we've uh, tried to change and improve on uh, what our application process is and trying to reach out to our communities. So I'm going to turn it over to Kelly who will talk more about one of our new additions that we added to our uh, application package this year. This is just a quick picture of our poster that we are uh, sending out to our communities with our new tentative date. Um, not just our communities, but the high school kids here at Metawa and then also the schools that um, our students attend within Thunder Bay. So um, as I, I had previously mentioned, we have a language team here that uh, has come from New Zealand. And as Georgette spoke to, they have done um, tremendous work and they've hired language speakers um, that we call language heroes from each of the communities who are fluent in their language and can pass this on to the generations, the upcoming generations. Um, a lot of our schools are going into um, like a, a immersion. Immersion, yeah, immersion eventually learning. immersion type yeah. programming. Yeah, so we have um, many of our schools, like the six that we are supporting right now are doing strictly language speaking classes up until grade three. So that some of the students are able to like grasp mm -hmm. their language and hang on to it. Um, and so that being said, 
um, Susan Sandow was an elder from Constance First Lake and she, were, she was hired on as the Cree language specialist. And she was just doing amazing things, um, learning the methodology. And um, she taught many people from the organization how to, mm -hmm. how to like, like uh, introduction to Cree. And she was just one of the most amazing people that we all had the honor of being able to work with. Um, sadly, she passed away last year. Um, oh boy. Greatly, like we really felt the loss here uh, within the program, the communities. Um, she was, prior to this, she was working as a language teacher in her community. So she really had a hand in um, teaching and helping raise so many of the students that came from Constance Lake. So, we thought what better way to honor her and promote literacy um, and uh, just to keep it going for the next, as long as this bursary is happening, which we hope is for a long time. So we started up or we added an addition to our bursary um, and it's the annual language hero contest. So our plan for this is each year to honor a different language hero from our communities. And we thought it would be just uh, pretty special to start off with Susan and um, continue on from there just to promote, not only promote the language, but oral, oral language is um, huge for our student learning and it's another piece of literacy. So um, it really ties in nicely. This is just some of the criteria. It's a little small, I apologize. I'm going to just really <laughs> give you a close up of my face here. <laughs> um, so we have, again, we're covering uh, all of the grades. So we're doing a K to six um, and we are doing a seven to 12, grade seven to 12, and then a post-secondary. And all of our students are encouraged to participate. Um, there's criteria for, I should have had this printed out. Oh, maybe I do. Let's see here. Yay. Sorry, it's so small. Um, so for grades K to six, they're going to be choosing to write an illustration or biography of someone they consider a language hero from their community. So really supporting that language hero piece. And um, we're allowing for the space to use multimedia, they can use um, oral, they can do it through song, poetry, whatever they feel um, expresses and shows their creativity the most. And we're sort of continuing out. So grade seven to 12, they're gonna be um, doing a story based on someone from the community that they also feel is a language hero. And within this one, they're going to be more, um, we're hoping that we're actually going to get some entries in the language. Mm -hmm. So part of our panel for judging, we do make sure that we have fluent language speakers. And so we'll, we'll be able to judge that criteria. And then again, we're looking for post-secondary um, sharing person, sharing how a person from the community and the traditional language have encouraged them in post-secondary to be where they are and to follow their dreams. So that's basically the criteria. It's it's um it's our first year. <laughs> so we're gonna give it a go and see how see how things go. Right. But we have high hopes. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna turn it over to Georgette so okay. that you can you can kind of have a look at mm -hmm. some of our past students and where they are now. Okay, so uh, we reached out to some of uh, the post-secondary students that I worked with, and uh, we had some uh, response back. And uh, unfortunately, due to their uh, work schedules and uh, relocating, et cetera, they weren't able to Zoom in with us. However, uh, we have uh, one of our students who did a video talking about uh, his uh, education goals, how uh, it worked during the pandemic, et cetera. So Brandon was a graduate and he's now moved on to uh, a higher level and is in Toronto. Um, 
Carrie Chichu, Dr. Carrie Chichu was one of our past uh, award winners with the Bowmanville Bursary that we present. And she's completed her uh, education and now is a uh, doctor working at the <coughs> of, uh, Ottawa. And Angela Sophia is uh, one of our students that's uh, working part-time, raising a family and going to part-time so they talk a little bit about uh, how they're reaching their goals so I'm going to move on to uh, Brandon's video which I hope that uh, everyone's able to hear with the sound so here goes hello Boju. my name is Brandon Chakmachak I'm an Anishinaabe from the traditional lands of Gunugamig First Nation in Treaty 9 territory I was born in Hornpain, Ontario and grew up in Thunder Bay Presently, I live and work in Toronto as I begin my grad school journey. Like many young people, I did not know my path at first. I was thinking doctor, nurse, police officer. They were all potential paths for my education. But my interest in politics, government, and decision-making led me to Lakehead University's History and Political Science program. Here I was able to bridge the historical stories and histories of the land with the present day what we would call political issues or power issues that define our daily interactions with each other's and the government's. And thankfully, I had strong family, friend, and financial support systems, which I point to as evidence of my academic success. For all four years of my undergrad, I was on the Dean's List and received the Tom Miller Memorial Scholarship in History. I always seek to bridge the academic education with my personal family history, the history of our peoples, to build pathways for healing and a better tomorrow. In pursuit of this goal, after my graduation from Lakehead University, I am attending the Master of Public Policy program at the prestigious Monk School of Global Affairs and Public Policy at the University of Toronto. Here, I hope to sharpen my analytical and contextual tools to make a difference in the policy spheres which shape our lives and relations. The pandemic was an incredibly difficult time as a student and young person. After all, this past year, I was writing my undergraduate thesis through two consecutive lockdowns, which entailed total social isolation and the closure of one of my main outlets for wellness, the gym. Uh, it was isolating and at times depressing to attempt to balance a full workload in anything but normal circumstances. There were also many unknown financial challenges, such as upgrading my technology at home and worrying about the cost of being at home all the time, as my mom is the sole provider for our household. However, with the support of Matawa, other scholarships and bursaries through my hard work, I was able to get a tablet to help with the heavy load of online readings, save for grad school, and help with some of our energy costs. I credit my resiliency in getting through the year and a determination to get it done and continue on my path. Truly, I feel the possibilities are endless for our young peoples today. You see so many of us headed into nursing, personal support care, child and youth care, social work, policing, indigenous studies, and the booming trades. And I hope to follow in what I think is going to be a generational change for our young people. I see myself fitting into this emerging story of our generation as a policymaker and problem solver in the public sector, either in the governments of Canada or Ontario. But once again, the possibilities remain boundless and I will see where my journey takes me. Ultimately, if I'm providing a voice and perspective that is so often absent from these decision-making tables, I know I will have succeeded in what I wanted to do in this world and my education is allowing me to pursue these ambitious goals. Wow. Very good. Mm -hmm. He's a very good student. He's <laughs> an excellent student. Okay, so as mentioned, uh, Dr. Carrie Lynn Chichu was uh, previously one of our uh, award winners and she has uh, really uh, moved forward with her education in so many ways. Uh, Carrie is from uh, one of our uh, Natal communities, Long Life 58. She graduated with her PhD in the spring of 2020 and began her career as an assistant professor in the Faculty of Education at the University of Ottawa in January of 2020. 
And in July 2020, she began a three-year mandate as the Director of Indigenous Teacher Education Program. In addition, in 2020, she was awarded the Canadian Association for Curriculum Study mm -hmm. Visitation Award for the best uh, doctoral thesis in Canada. Um, Carrie has been doing a lot of presentations at several universities um, for, with, with her thesis. Um, also, in addition to all of this, now that Carrie is working at the University of Ottawa, she is reaching out to Matawa and we will be having a meeting with Carrie um, next week. And what she wants to do is develop a culturally, appro culturally appropriate teacher program that uh, we can partner with the University of Ottawa so that we can train teachers in our communities. Uh, so she's working really hard on trying to find ways as well, even being in Ottawa, trying to figure out how she can give back to the communities of Matawa and how she can form partnerships and uh, um, just promote the University of Ottawa's uh, teacher program as well. And so she's working hard on uh, with the university, with the College of Teachers and everyone to be able to uh, form a partnership and offer a um, BA, BA Ed or some type of uh, teacher program that will work for our communities. Okay, Angela Sophia is uh, our current student right now in the post-secondary program. Um, yeah, so Angela Sophia is from Webakwe. Um, she's in her third year of uh, her degree program at University of uh, uh, Lincoln University, studying her Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. Uh, Angela always wanted to go to university. She struggled uh, a bit at the beginning um, as a young high school uh, graduate. Uh, she she was uh, she enrolled in university previously and uh, ended up quitting some of her courses. Uh, she wasn't quite sure like where she was going, but knew that she wanted to complete her education and has been really uh, moving forward on uh, finding a way to balance out her uh, home life, her uh, education goals, her family. So currently, she is at the university and. Um, I'm not reading it word for he word here, just kind of talking about her as one of our students. Uh, so she um, she was living in Webekwe, her uh, home community, which is a fly-in community from Thunder Bay. So it's, it's only, uh, there's no road access there except during the winter time. So students that are there or people that live there can only come out to Matawa, um, sorry, not Matawa, <laughs> come out to Thunder Bay or any other communities through uh, flights. Um, so she, that's okay. Um, she also was having uh, some difficulties with balancing because of COVID and, uh, you know, like dealing with her family and trying to stay healthy and trying to ensure that she still works towards all her education goals and her jobs. Uh, so it was a little bit worryful and stressful for her going through her uh, studies during the pandemic. Um, she also had uh, challenges with study groups because as you know, like with the pandemic, people couldn't get together and it was a lot of online or Zoom and uh, it was a little bit challenging for her and several of our students on trying to do a teamwork together and just getting organized and uh, trying to set up time when they could all be available to meet. So that was part of her stress as well. And uh, also again, as usual, like just balancing everything in her life. Next. All right. Oh, just one page. <laughs> right here. Sorry. Okay. So what we did was uh, when we were talking to some of our students and reaching out to them to see how they could uh, uh, give us feedback on how they were managing their education goals and working through the pandemic, we presented them with some uh, questions uh, to see. Um, what their answers would be. So one of our questions was, how did you overcome those challenges of COVID-19 in order to continue and pursue your education? So again, this is from Angela Sophia. Uh, she said, I had to ask and call and email the instructors. I emailed and reached out to other students in chat boxes through Zoom. I made sure I had every program I had to download was correct. 
It took patience and asking for a lot of help. A tutor helped me as well. Next question we ask is, what are your future plans when you graduate? Uh, Angela says, my future plans when I graduate is to continue working and I am still thinking about upgrading to the honor, honors BA in psychology. I will continue working with my community and continue with my OG Cree language study. And she says, Miigwech. So one of the things too is a lot of our um, communities, uh, they, they have to get services outside of the community because they don't have like their own psychologists, their own doctors, and um, just a lot of the resource people that they need in their school. So it's nice to see when students are looking at the needs of communities and pursuing your education to meet those needs. And this is what Angela is doing. That's it. Uh, we have a few pictures here of just of some of our past events, our awards, and huh. a couple of our keynote speakers. So this is Durrell. He graduated last year. Um, he was our keynote speaker in the last uh, uh, award ceremony that we had. Um, he's won athletic awards. The Jordan Wilboss Award that you saw was played in the video. Um, he was a recipient of that. He also was a recipient of the Bowmanville Bursary Award. And um, we have, yeah. So we just threw a couple of pictures together and we thank you all very much for your patience and sitting through our slideshow <laughs> and presentation and hope it was, you know, interesting. <laughs> thank you, ladies. It's nice to see some familiar faces. It's nice to see George. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, if I can get you to unshare your screen, though, if that's all right. Um, sadly, uh, I don't think we have a whole lot of time for questions this morning because we do have a couple other things that we need to get to. But I really, really want to thank you um, because there's a lot of members on our call that are new members that don't really have the background of the bursary program um, and how important it is to our club and something that we've supported for so long. So, so thank you for educating, uh, ed educating some of our members and um, you're more than welcome to stay on. I'm sure if there's more questions, uh, we do know how to get in touch with you, Renee and Fred know how to get in touch with you. Uh, and yeah, we hope to have you back down to our club soon. I just finished the last page in my notebook that I got when you guys came last time. <laughs> I, yeah, so, but thank you. You're more than welcome to stay on the call, ladies. Uh, you know, I appreciate all the work that you put into to doing that. And uh, yeah, so um, we're going to kind of move along quickly because we do have the summer squad. Um, Lloyd, are you still here, Lloyd? Okay, so happy bucks. We're only doing one. Lloyd gets it because he actually emailed me about it. So. Thanks. 17 happy bucks. Uh, my dad passed away 17 years ago. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, I picked up some reel-to-reel -reel tapes from my mom, which I assumed was uh, just random recordings. Um, and I had them uh, turned into electronic files. Uh, when I got the files back, um, it was a recording of my dad um, speaking to me as a baby um and uh and uh talking to me and uh trying to get me to say words and uh as you folks know i recently had a a, uh, a baby daughter myself uh and so um to have my dad uh to hear from my dad when he was uh talking to me as a newborn uh and, well i am doing the same with my newborn uh was something really special and uh it's first time i've heard my dad say my name and uh, 17 years and it was just nice to get a little message from him so I'm very very happy that's amazing and I am very very jealous because I wish I had recordings of my dad because <laughs> it's been 30 years since he's been gone um, okay Rachel we're going to turn it over to you and the ladies of the summer squad to do a, uh, a wrap-up for us Yes, so we're lucky enough to have all four of our ladies here, Doriana, Kaylee, Shekinah, and Kim. And it's hard to believe that uh, the squad this year has just finished, they're entering their 10th week with us. So they're here to show you some of the highlights uh, of their summer, and then hopefully we have time for a couple questions. So Kaylee, I believe I'm gonna turn it over to you who have a has a video to share. Yeah, so... I just share my screen. I've never yeah. done this before. And make okay. sure you hit the share audio because I always forget that part. Okay.
Can you see the video? Yeah, looks good. Crazy what about the screen now? Yep, perfect. Okay.
Awesome. Doriana, can I just turn it over to you just to give us a, a brief overview of, of what you thought of the summer and then if we have time, we can get some questions. Yeah, for sure. Hi everyone. Just, Doriana was our, our team leader for, for the squad. Hi everyone. I'm so excited to be here on a Tuesday morning. Of course, seeing all your faces and smiling. Um, so a little bit of an overview, uh, I think in general, just making the connections that we've made this summer has been the best reward I think we can all agree on. Um, being able to communicate with not just all of you Rotarians, but with our community and giving back. Um, overall, we think it was a great summer full of laughter, full of, you know, helping out our community in any way we can, supporting those who need us the most and providing back to our community through events. Um, I think one of the downfall was definitely the weather for us. Um, so uh, we kind of <laughs> had some cancellations of some events due to weather, but I mean, some were postponed. So I, I think the positivity and the optimistic optimism that we all had to turn it around was definitely a highlight for us. Um, and I have to give a big shout out to Kaylee for doing the pop-up concert, not just once, postponing it, but twice. <laughs> so you can definitely tell our dedication to do things for our community is definitely there. So we want to say thank you for giving us this role and this position this summer and supporting us and uh, giving us the opportunity to create events for our community and supporting. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where, I can't see Amy, maybe you're on a different screen. I don't, we're kind of running short on time. So I'll let Amy decide whether she wants to take a question or, or move on. Yeah, I think we can make a time. And guys, don't forget, today is the 17th. Water drive, water drive, water drive. Everybody out to Watson's, bring your water. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Bring your um, cases of water to donate to life. Anyone have a question for the squad? You guys have been amazing. You've been such ambassadors for our club and, you know, we're, we're, we're proud to have you as, as representing us this summer. And yeah, the weather did, did not do you any favors this year, <laughs> but you guys were phenomenal. And uh, we look for, Oh, John, sorry. Yeah. I just wanted to ask the girls, are any of them likely to join Rotary in the future? Hmm. I think I can answer that one for the girls. I think it's an, absolute 100% yes. Um, I think the community in the bond building has definitely been a highlight and I think speaking to each of them and myself included, that's definitely a yes. <clears throat> we look forward to that. Okay, Joe, quick. Yeah, I just wanted to say a couple of the events that I was at, just seeing the, the both at the, uh, the drive, uh, the drive-in movie, and then in yesterday's pop-up concert, seeing the the joy on people's faces and, and bringing them an event that just touched their lives um, was just so wonderful in very simple ways, um, you know, so hats off to you. And that's what we do. We try to help the community and you guys were right in there and you brought that out to the community. So thank you. Yeah. All right, ladies. Okay, so we're gonna have a very quick announcement. I don't know if it wants to be Chris or Phil. I'm focusing on you guys because you guys are, you need us right now, so. I'm happy to, uh, to talk. So <clears throat> just uh, to, to talk, we got, uh, as everybody I'm sure is aware, we got pretty late approval from the municipality on uh, for RibFest, a drive through RibFest. And Chris has been working really hard to put together, or pull all the strings to get that together. So thank you, Chris. It's, it's an excellent job. By now, everybody's seen the uh, emails about uh, volunteers. So thank you to everybody that's volunteered so far. We're putting a, a list of schedules together and responsibilities and all of that, which will be going out shortly. But as you know, it is this weekend on the 21st, 22nd, running from 11 in the morning through to nine at night. Uh, we will be there for half an hour before and after. Currently, we have uh, two rib vendors that are attending, uh, Camp 30 and Billy Bones. Uh, as well as there's the, I think it was Chipmunks Fries, or uh, that's the name, I believe, and Loaded Pierogi is going to be there as well. So, it, uh, you know, so far from what I can see social media wise, everybody is pretty excited about it and have been missing the event. So a couple of posts I made have got a lot of, uh, a lot of action out of them and people seem to be pretty excited. So it's shaping up to be a really good event. 
So again, thanks for uh, for everybody for volunteering. Appreciate it. If you haven't volunteered, please consider it. Uh, we are in need. We've reached out to other clubs as well. So thanks to John Burns and to uh, uh, Joe about that. Uh, Amy as well. They've done a great job in reaching out. We've had a few people that have come forth and said, yeah, we're happy to help. So that's a good thing. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you all there. All right. So yeah, so if you can volunteer, we're hoping to get our lawn signs, you know, as you've seen the lawn signs that we've done in the past. So as soon as we get those, um, we'll maybe send out an email to whoever can help out. Uh, and Joe, absolutely, in the, in the chat there, a big thank you to Rachel, Leanna, and Rebecca, uh, who have been kind of coordinating our squad. You guys, you know, I know how busy everybody is, and to add that onto your schedule, you know, that was a uh, great thanks. Thanks to all you guys. So yeah. All right. So yeah, Ribfest. Uh, we're running a little late, so thanks again to the ladies from Ottawa. That was, you know, it's good to sort of get a refresher on that. Um, yeah, if there's anything else, if there's, oh, Chris, Chris Dulu, you have our quote. Where I do it? have a quote, and uh, it's from uh, Oscar Wilde. And here it is. Life is not fair, and perhaps it is a good thing for most of us that it is not. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. All right. So if there's nothing else for the good of Rotary for today, I think we will call that our meeting and I look forward to seeing everybody on the weekend. Take care, everybody. Thanks, ladies. Have a good day. Thank you.